We're here with Secretary of State Shania Fagan and the Oregon Audits Division to release a report on Oregon's pay equity law. Uh, our agenda for today, uh, we'll hear, hear brief remarks from Secretary Fagan first, then we'll hear from Audits Director Kit Mehmet, followed by Audits Manager Ian Green. And at the end, we'll save time for questions. Uh, we are going to record the meeting. So if anyone is interested in getting a copy of that recording afterwards, I will be sending it out to the same distribution list that got the invite. And if you want to record on your own computer, uh, just let me know in the chat and I will give you permission to do so. For the Q&A, uh, we'll use the hand raise feature in Zoom, uh, which if you've never done that before, uh, it's the little reaction button at the bottom and there's a hand raise option you can click on uh, and you can also lower your hand. Uh, we'll just take questions in the order we get them at the end. In the meantime, uh, we do ask folks to stay on mute when they are not speaking. Uh, that will just help everyone get better audio. And uh, lastly, um, if you will just hold questions until the very end, uh, we'll make sure we have plenty of time for them. We're planning on, on going until 1130 and I suspect we'll have plenty of time for, for Q&A at the end. Um, and then actually the last note I want to make, uh, we are releasing the report we're talking about today at 11. Um, I know many of you do not have a copy of it yet. So unlike our normal approach to these uh, releases, uh, we're going to be giving a presentation on the findings in the report and then giving you a copy to read. So I'll be following up with everybody over email uh, with the report copy, and then there will be a press release going out afterwards as well. So with that, I will pass it over to Secretary uh, Fagan to get us started. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Good morning. I'm hobbling to you today from my kitchen table, one of the only uh, three places I can be in my home today. So thank you for uh, joining us today for the release of the advisory report on pay equity in the state workforce. As I've said many times, my mission as Oregon Secretary of State is to build trust. I'm seeking to build trust between the people of Oregon and their state government so that Oregon's public services can make a positive difference in people's everyday lives. And the audits division is one of the most powerful tools we have to fulfill that mission, to make sure that Oregon's limited resources are making a real difference where they are needed most. Today, we're talking about accountability. In 2017, the legislature and Governor Kate Brown instructed state agencies to start down a path towards pay equity to eliminate gaps that exist between how much a man and a woman make for the same job or how much a person of color makes versus a white person for the same job. When leaders set us down a path like this, we will, as the audits division, hold state agencies accountable to follow through. Today, we're releasing an analysis of state payroll data done by the Audits Division, which shows that we've made progress, but there is still work to do. In response to the pay equity law that state agencies have implemented, they have implemented several best practices that should reduce wage gaps over time. Best practices like prohibiting employers from asking about previous salary history, requiring compensation to be based on a set of objective allowable factors and giving employees the right <clears throat> excuse me giving employees the right to sue if they believe their pay is not fair in response to the pay equity law the state also conducted two pay equity studies and implemented a pay adjustment based on the findings thousands of state employees received pay increases as a result of their studies these are important steps down a path towards pay equity. In 2021, one of our audits managers, Ian Green, who's with us today, suggested that we analyze payroll data and see if the pay equity law has done what it set out to do. And I immediately instructed the division to begin that work. Today, we're releasing the results of that analysis. What we found is that despite steps taken, wage gaps persist among state employees. In a moment, I'll pass it over to the auditors and audits director, Kip Mehmet, to report on the findings. First, I want to express my gratitude and appreciation for the hard work and professionalism and innovation of the audits division. This advisory report is an example of the Oregon Audits Division willingness to innovate. This report is not a typical audit of a single state program, 
even though it was conducted with the same high standards. Instead, it's data analysis. We have the expertise in the audits division to do this kind of work. And as an independent constitutional office, the Secretary of State's agency is well positioned to do it objectively. So today we're able to provide this valuable insight to leaders in Oregon, thanks to the creative thinking of our audits team. With that, I want to introduce our audits director, Kip Mehmet. Good morning. Thank you very much, Secretary Fagan. My name is Kip Mehmet. I'm the audits director for the Oregon Secretary of State's Audits Division. And I want to thank the secretary, as always, for her awesome comments and her strong support of our division and our mission. I also want to thank the media members, as always, too, for your interest in coverage of our work. That's important, especially on a report like we're issuing today, which, as the secretary noted, is a report looking at pay equity within the state government workforce. We're releasing this report on National Equal Pay Day uh, to emphasize the report's important findings on this important day nationally where we're recognizing the importance, using that word a lot, of equitable pay in the workforce. The report did find significant pay gaps still exist within the state workforce despite recent good faith efforts by state leaders to address these pay inequities, so there's more work to be done. Um, this report is another example of the Audits Division's work focused on equity. Government auditing standards require auditors to assess the three E's, we call it, of, of, of how, you, how public resources are used, the effectiveness, the efficiency, and the equity. And so this one goes really to that last part of the equitable use of public resources in terms of compensating state employees. I want to introduce and thank the audit team, including Ian Green, the audit manager, Jeff Hill, and Amelia Evelyn, and others who served as lead auditors on the project. I'm going to turn it over to Ian. He's going to give you a real five-minute high-level overview summary of the report, and then we'll get into your good questions. Thank you again for your time today, and Ian, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Kip, and, and thanks, Secretary Fagan. Uh, my name's Ian Green. I'm an audit manager here with the Oregon Secretary of State, and we found that Oregon must do more to close persistent wage gaps for women and people of color in state government. In 2015, a study found that wage gaps exist in state government. This study helped to inform pay equity legislation two years later. As legislators noted at the time, everyone should have the ability to earn a living wage without fear of discrimination based on gender, race, or sexuality. Seven years after that pay equity study and after two rounds of pay equity raises, we found that persistent wage gaps remain for women and people of color. These groups continue to earn a fraction of what their colleagues earn for the same or similar work. For example, a woman earns approximately 83 cents on the dollar of their male colleagues. A person of color earns approximately 88 cents on the dollar of their white colleagues. And women of color have even greater wage gaps. In 2019, we saw that the we saw that white men had the largest average pay equity raises. In 2022, white men and women saw the largest average pay equity raises. In both years, people of color had among the lowest pay equity raises. Wage gaps can have a significant impact on people's lives. For, exa for example, a woman would need to work nearly 44 years to earn the same amount a man earns in 30 years based on the average wage gap since 1960. Although wage gaps have improved, women and people of color must still work years longer to earn the same amount of money. We did not analyze individual cases, but thousands of employees saw existing wage gaps close. Closing individual wage gaps is important work. With each closed gap, the state moves closer to its goal of fair and equitable compensation among all employees. The state has also changed how starting salaries are determined for new employees. It no longer relies on an employee's prior salary history, and salaries are now based on experience and education, among other factors. This best practice should continue to narrow wage gaps over time. Despite that positive work, women and people of color did not receive enough raises to change the persistent wage gaps. Lack of access to opportunities or not accounting for unpaid labor may be contributing factors. In general, female and BIPOC employees have less seniority in state government. One reason is that women generally continue to perform 
a disproportionate amount of housework and childcare. We found that the state of Oregon has made excellent progress on meeting its strategic goal of a more representative and diverse workforce. Some demographic groups still need greater representation compared to the state's overall population, but since 2007, the state has made major progress. Our data analytics identified a number of concerns relating to pay equity and if the legislature's intent is being met. However, it is important to note that our report did not find that the state of Oregon was out of compliance with pay equity legislation. Rather, we found that wage gaps remain and that further study is warranted on this important topic. We recommend the legislature and the Department of Administrative Services continue to study pay equity in the state. Thank you very much for your time. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have.